I am headed to the golf course, but I am not playing golf. What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda here. I am pretty excited. I'm actually headed to a very, very exclusive golf course. One, <laughs> I've never played there, but two, uh, just to even be on the grounds is actually kind of an honor. And so it's a long ways away, about an hour away from me, maybe an hour and a half actually. And the reason I'm going there is because there is the Live Golf Tournament in Chicago today at Rich Harvest Farms Golf Course. Now, it's a private course. Actually, it's not that old, about 23 years old. Started in 1999, and Mr. Rich, what a fortuitous name, actually designed some software that unified the stock markets, I think, back in the 90s, and I believe it made him a billionaire, so he was able to build this dream course, which has actually hosted a number of professional golf events, but most of Notably today, it is hosting the Live Golf Tournament Chicago. Now, I also want to say that the course is actually the home for NIU, so Northern Illinois Huskies, men and women's golf teams. So it's pretty cool that those college teams, uh, men's and women's, I believe, get to practice there. So really nice course, obviously. A lot of college teams get to play at some of the nicest courses that are local to them. But that's kind of where it's at. So it's a little bit west of Chicago. So I'm actually pretty excited about checking this out just being on a golf course of this stature. Now, one of the big reasons I'm going to this is I've actually been excited about the new Live Golf League, and one of the big reasons is all of my favorite players pretty much are on this league. I mean, almost all of them. I think literally the only single professional golfer that is not on this league that I would love to see in person, that I've been a fan of for many years, is Ricky Fowler. So I know he is playing on the PGA Tour, Amazingly, he almost did not keep his status this year, but uh, I just find him kind of a interesting guy, a lot of personality, he's had a great career, so no doubt he can do whatever he wants, but it would just be fun to see that. But the big reason for me is that for years now, I have been hoping to see Bryce and DeChambeau in person. I am a big fan of his. He is by far by no small margin my favorite professional golfer right now not only because of how big of a driver he is right and how long he hits the ball but he's just really growing on me obviously i have gone to the single plane swing i've gone to single length golf clubs i've actually mimicked his method of practicing my putting although i do not putt like him i don't do that arm lock thing so i have actually improved my game i think a lot by what he has shared very openly and he has a youtube channel where he does a lot of that stuff so i find it really interesting and helpful and i am excited to see him play not just because you know i like him but i am so curious to see what 320 yard drives look like you know to have 305 310 yards of carry because as an amateur golfer i go out with a lot of guys who tell me that they are bombing their drives 300 yards and they get up on the tee and they crank one off the tee and they're like man that was a bomb tell me what the distance was and i measure it out on gps and it was 165 or 179 you know, nowhere near 300. And I think a lot of amateurs think that they're hitting a lot further than they really are. So I'm actually really excited to see what a real pro who really does drop bombs, what that looks like. I think it'll blow my mind. My brain might melt in my head and ooze out of my ears. Or what's left of it at least. All right, so let's head to Rich Harvest. It's early in the morning. I wanna be there for everything today. Well, it's been a long time since I've been to the DeKalb area, and if you've never been out to this part of west of Chicago, it gets pretty rural. There's a decent amount of farmland out here as well, but we're close to NIU, and a lot of the local corn comes from this area, which is pretty cool. We are only a couple miles away here, and the first thing that I'm kind of curious about is to see how many people there are, because I've heard, oh, Liv is giving away tickets, they're always discounting tickets, nobody comes, there's no crowd, so I'm curious to see what the crowds are like at our Friday session of the Liv Golf Tournament. Hey, they have goat yoga here. Looks like we're here, I'm getting pretty excited. So I'll tell you what, we are in the last available lot, and this one looks pretty packed, so I'm assuming the other three lots are completely full. All right, so I'm here, I'm pretty excited. The funny thing is I'm walking up to the golf course and I can hear the music playing. So it almost sounds like I'm going to a festival or something like that. So, I mean, I guess I am. 
Cool, let's check it out. Sweet. The range, media center, no access there. And we get in over there. And I think the journey officially starts right now. Man, and in terms of yard signs, that's a pretty big one right there. Pretty cool. Here is the Fan Village, so check that out. And the clubhouse is actually right next to the entrance to the Fan Village, and these have actually been set up as the little headquarters for each of the teams, so the teams can go and hang out there and be together. And what's really interesting is at the beginning of the day, you might see your favorite players coming out of the building there, which is pretty cool. But where we are going here, is the Fan Village. What's cool about this Fan Village is they've got like a kids area here, kids zone, performance zone. They have the merchandise shop right there and a lot of the other stores, but right over here is where the concert will be. I don't know, presumably around five o'clock, but they got the big stage here for the concert tonight. It's pretty cool. It's gonna drain that impossible putt. Maybe not, because I don't even know where the hole is. What's also super cool is they have this huge outdoor screen and then all these seating areas. So if you're bringing family or something like that and you just wanna chill, watch it, and kind of experience it like you were on the beach or vacation, man, this is pretty awesome. Great thinking here so you can bring multiple generations of families to this event and the kids can go out and do some of the events because I know I would get totally schooled like on this chipping activity right there. It'd be pretty embarrassing for me, but someone would love it. If you have grounds passes, that's the eating area and a bunch of food trucks over there. Ice cream trucks, food trucks. You can get pretty much anything you want. Plenty of seating. Really nice seating too, really super comfortable. Pretty awesome. Generally, it's been impossible to find Live Golf merchandise online, so they have a store here. Let's check it out. So the one benefit of having the Club 54 tickets, which I think are the most expensive ones, is that you have this building that is right on the course itself. So you've got a private area that you can actually watch the game. And it looks like there's a wraparound deck, which you would expect here, but you can see the golfers already going off in the distance there. So this is a place where you can hang out, get your drinks, premium food, and see the course. So that's reserved for the elites. None shall pass. They do have this public viewing area up here, which looks pretty nice. Let's see who's coming up on the green. You can definitely get up close to the action, that's for sure. I mean, 10 feet away from the green right there. It's long. Yikes. Man, everyone's going long today. They're going long, but definitely the problem on this green is that it is pretty narrow. You've got a rough with a pretty big drop off there in the middle. So you've definitely got to kind of fly that middle or the front edge of the green. Otherwise you're going to be in the rough down in the valley there. I kind of feel like I'd play it right here, kind of in the fat part of the green and roll it up because stopping on there seems to be a little bit of a problem for everyone today. Oh, well, 
almost have one. He's got a putt. All the team signs are out here. That's pretty cool. I'll be honest, I don't know who's on the Torque Golf Club at the moment, but this is my favorite logo. I love the color scheme, that neon green and that logo there showing Torque in three dimension. Pretty cool, I love that logo. Here's the leaderboard. Yeah, you can pretty much read this from anywhere. One of the really cool things about the shotgun start I realized is that even though today was sold out, you can basically walk anywhere on the course and the groups are spread out so the fans are spread out too so it doesn't really ever feel that congested and as you're walking through the course you can just walk right up to the rope you're walking right along the fairway watch your favorite players hit their approach shots keep walking around and just get a lot of golf absorb a lot of golf see a lot of your different uh, favorite players without having to deal with crowds that are all bunched up or just starting to disperse from those first tees as the normal golf tournaments start. And in fact here, as I was kind of walking down the 18th towards the hospitality suite where I bought a ticket for, I just stopped at a lot of the greens, just walked right up to them and saw all sorts of players that I recognized and you stand right next to them, you hear what their caddies talking to them about and you get to see the shots really close up and again you can see there we're not that deep around the green everyone is getting a really great view and uh, really feeling like they are a part of this tournament I mean in some cases you know there were some fun comments between the gallery and the players too looks like they take care of the volunteers too pretty big facility see people in there eating sitting down watching Pretty cool, pretty thoughtful. I tell you what, I've never played this course and uh, it is far too pretty for me to ever play on. The gallery club here was about a $250 ticket. As I mentioned, it included uh, grab and go food and unlimited drinks, including alcoholic beverages. And one of the things that I was surprised at is that you actually have to walk a few holes to get to the gallery club. And while I thought that was an imposition at first, actually it's brilliant because what it does is it puts it relatively central to the golf course. So you don't have to stop for concessions in most places because you can just walk back to the gallery club. It's kind of a hub for you on the golf course, grab a drink, grab a beer, grab a Coke, grab a sandwich or whatever, and then go back out onto the course. So while I didn't like having to walk there at the beginning, it's actually brilliant where to set up. All right, to get in, they have a person there guarding the door. You just show them your ticket and you will get a wristband. And then they have this building set up here. And I was expecting grab and go food, kind of food in coolers wrapped up to take around with you, sandwiches, things like that. But I was actually one really impressed with the setup they had. Plenty of bar height tools. It was actually very cool inside, very well air conditioned. It was a hot day. I noticed a lot of people coming in there just to cool off. They have a couple of bars set up so that you can get drinks, anything that you want, alcoholic or pop or just bottle of water. And then they had basically a buffet food stand set up here. I got a kielbasa sandwich on a pretzel roll and some mac and cheese. They also have lighter food, some packaged food like uh, chips and cookies and snacks and treats. They had full size candy bars there too. So they spared no expense on that, which I really appreciated. So the food was actually quite a bit nicer than I expected. And I know that they said that in the Club 54 tent, they had premium food options. So I'm kind of guessing carving station and food at that level. But even for this lower tier grab and go, I was thoroughly impressed. Now, they also had a pretty nice setup for you to sit. And I, despite the number of people that I thought would buy access to this, never found a problem getting a seat anywhere. In fact, I just grabbed a table up by the glass windows so that you can kind of cool off and yet you can still see the action. And even when I came back here a couple of times later, there were still no problem getting a table. Now, out on this little deck here is the place to get the best view. 
but you can still see the players coming by even if you're inside. Now, one of the great things about this is that they have these little handouts here. So these printed sheets that show one, when everyone's going off and what the groups are and what hole they start on. So the great thing is if you walk up to any hole and you see your players, you can figure out who's coming up next or who's already been there. So it's really great for kind of planning out your day and seeing the players that you want to see. Now, you probably want to see the porch here. I did too. I went out to see a little bit of the action obviously the rail space goes quickly the beautiful thing about where this is set up too is it's set up on this fairway of this hole probably along 250 yards to 300 yards so what happens here is that most of the tee shots most of those drives kind of fall right next to this terrace so it's a really great spot to see guys make their approach shots into this green now one of the ways that the shotgun start really improves the fan experience is that, like I said, people are spread around for the most part and that is great because you can walk up to pretty much any hole. Maybe it's not right by the tee box, but in my case I did a lot of times. So you are standing like shoulder to shoulder with the caddies and the players. You are listening to the shots, you're listening to them talk, you're listening to them to talk about how they're going to approach the hole, which is really interesting and never did I feel like I was standing two or three people back and not have a really good view of all the players that I wanted to see. So you could do this on any hole, go up to the middle of the fairway, along the fairway to see the approach shots, go right up to the green. That is really the beauty of spreading out the crowds. In fact, a lot of people might see this and say, hey, were there even any crowds there because it doesn't really look that busy? So yes, there are definitely crowds. So that does not mean this event is crowd free. In fact, there are crowds following some of the top players. I really wanted to see Bryson DeChambeau and I would say that his threesome, his group that day was probably the most followed because it was kind of a key one. Bryson DeChambeau, Cam Smith and Lee Westwood together. What an awesome uh, trio on the tee. It was uh, sweet to see them. People were talking with them. They are definitely there to play some sweet golf, but we're also being very friendly with, especially the kids. So it was really cool to see these titans of the golf world all together and playing. Now, one of the things that I did here is I wanted to see him on this par four because it was a fairly long straight par four, but he actually teed off with the driver, much to the dismay of many of us. Now, what is interesting about this is that Lee Westwood and Cam Smith both teed off with drivers here and hit really fantastic drives. In fact, a lot of us amateurs commented on how awesome the shots were. You know, not only are they straight, but they are really long. I would say that Cam seemed to be the shortest driver here. I didn't have any specific numbers, but it looked like his drive was maybe 270. Lee Westwood's drive looked like it was maybe about 280. And then Bryson DeChambeau teed off with his three wood, I'm assuming, and it was pretty stark because when you got down to the fairway, he had outdriven everyone by about 30 yards. So I would call it maybe a 310 shot. So it's just pretty striking how long of a hitter he really is. Now, actually what I was disappointed with is that actually on one of the holes where I was hoping to see him drive, I actually abandoned that hole because it was a longer par four, about 390 something yards and a dog leg. And I kind of figured oh, I won't wait on this hole because he is probably going to lay up honestly with an iron because most guys that I saw on that hole were teeing off with either a hybrid or a fairway wood because you got to cut that corner and he actually did cut the corner on the subsequent day and over drove the green so that would have been really interesting to see him going at the ball with a driver full tilt pretty amazing but man just seeing these guys hit and one of the things I will say is that it just doesn't seem like they're straining themselves I feel like when me and my friends go out and we want to drive it a long way we're swinging out of our shoes but this just looks so rhythmic here and they just put a ton of distance on it. And here is the shot of where Bryson out drove everyone else with this three wood. Amazing. All right, guys, this is a pretty amazing day. It's not over yet, but I think you get the idea of what's going on here today. So a lot of fun for anyone, individuals, families, bring it on out. Beautiful course, beautiful day. So I'm gonna just leave it there and show you maybe a little bit what the rest of the day looks like here. But otherwise, thanks for joining me today. I'll see you later. Peter Von Panda, out.
Yes, Bill.